Hey everyone, Sean here from MotionTutorials.net with a new After Effects tutorial about your 3D options when you want to bring in a 3D object into After Effects 2025 in the year 2025. So we're going to talk about three different ways to do this. We have the new built-in 3D objects option straight within After Effects as we can see right here. We have Cineware which is bringing in a Cinema 4D object and rendering it in After Effects through the Cineware renderer. And we have Video Copilot's Element 3D option. So the 3D object importer directly in After Effects has been a newer thing the last couple versions after they acquired Substance and Substance Painter and using that technology to bring it in. Maxon recently had a promo video about a collaboration with Adobe to package their products together with After Effects and Substance. So I was a little curious and I wanted to make sure I was up to date on this option. So the way this works, you can import a GLTF or OBJ directly into After Effects. So I have a 3D model here that I've imported from TurboSquid and I have in Cinema 4D. If you don't know Cinema 4D, you don't need to worry about it for this method. You can grab a 3D object from either somewhere online like TurboSquid or that's part of the whole Adobe Substance option is they have a lot of stuff in their library for 3D objects. You don't need an in-between 3D app to really dig into like this. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna use the Cinema 4D object I have to compare some options. So here we have a 3D object in Cinema 4D. It has some textures, which I intentionally set up to test some things. So there's a red texture, a green texture on this pepper, and each of them have color, luminance, reflectance, and a bump map, and that's important. And if you render it here, this is what it looks like. Over in After Effects, if I grab that right here, you can see it shows. So for the sake of walking through this, I'll create a new composition and call it 3D Test 2, and I'm gonna drag this GLTF object, which you can export from Cinema 4D, or grab that format online, and I'm gonna drag it into my timeline and I'm going to get this warning about 3D models so I switched it to the advanced render which is the way that these objects work now in After Effects as of right now in January 2025 and it looks like nothing's happened I need to scale it way up and I just want to say in Cinema 4D this object is normalized it's the size of a cube but in Cinema 4D I had to scale it up quite a bit so then I can grab a camera with command option shift C and I can move around this. If I add some lights, I can add some lights with command option shift L for your hotkeys. It will catch the lights. So I'll move this, add this pink one, and just move that around. You can see it's working and I'll pop into this other one where I've already set this up with a couple lights and a camera. So you can see the default object and the lights do work. Now I'll say, and again, this is as of right now in January, 2025, the advanced renderer will show these compared to classic or cinema 4D, but that also cuts off a lot of the options that you might be used to with 3D in After Effects. So if I go to my camera, my camera options are very trimmed down. You do not have depth of field. You do not have focus distance and all that stuff. And you can see it didn't actually bring in a lot of the material settings I had in Cinema 4D. So this is an option if you're just comfortable with After Effects, you wanna get something in there, but you're not quite at Cinema 4D or you didn't purchase Element 3D, you can get them in there, but just know the limitations. It switches to the advanced render. You can add some lights, you can rotate it around. You can do depth mats to do depth of field and kind of fake it, but you can't do your camera stuff that you might be used to here, for example, where you are changing the depth of field, focus distance, aperture to get that realistic camera option. So that's the new default renderer using the Substance technology. It's there. You can use it. If you've never done anything in 3D, that's great. Now you can get 3D objects in. Next, let's talk about Cineware with Cinema 4D. So this is kind of the next level up. It's built into After Effects, but you kind of need to get into Cinema 4D. Now, as of quite a while ago, After Effects uses Cineware and Cinema 4D Lite with After Effects. So I have a lot of videos about that. If you want to learn more about Cinema 4D Lite and getting off the ground with 
Cinema 4D, and the built-in After Effects option. I'll link to those videos. Take a look at that. So the benefit of this is it comes with After Effects. You're not adding anything else. The drawback is you need to know Cinema 4D and learn about it. And then you'll get probably the highest quality. So again, here I have this 3D object that looks like this in Cinema 4D. So I've set it up. I've added textures and materials with those settings I mentioned. I've added lights in Cinema 4D. And I even have a null object with external compositing, which I can bring into After Effects, which is for another day in another tutorial. But again, I'll link to those. So I'll just start this from scratch. In After Effects, if I grab this pepper for AE, I'll make a new composition. I'll call this pepper for AE C4D. Drag this in. It is going to show up as the viewport for Cineware. And you can see how this is an effect that's automatically added. I can go to current. That'll give me my full rendering option. And that is my pepper. There you can see it looks very similar to how it does in Cinema 4D. Now the benefit of this is you can get full 3D quality and you can link it to After Effects options. What I mean by that, if I took a look at this finished one, is here I have my full 3D object, but I've changed the camera to centered comp camera and that is allowing me to use the After Effects camera. I've added some animation in After Effects. If we take a look at this in Cinema 4D, there is a bit of animation, it just rotates. And then if I look at it in After Effects, this does render pretty fast and well compared to what it used to in years past for Cinema 4D. So there we have it. It's a full 3D object. And the main benefit of this is it's in After Effects. So you can link the two. You can extract objects. There I have my lights. I have that null. I have that camera from After Effects. And you can add After Effects two and a half D objects. So great option. And again, check out some other videos I have if you want to learn more about that. The last option I want to talk about is Element 3D. This is from Video Copilot. It's been on version 2.2 for quite a while. I'm talking maybe like six to eight years, but this is a great option. It is a paid plugin. I do use this pretty op often in work and other videos. So what's great about this is it will bring in your 3D objects. There's a medium level learning curve. If I take a look at this scene here, there's this Element 3D layer, there's scene setup. There's a whole bunch of settings. You go to scene setup to set it up. This is your 3D object. This is where you build materials. This is where you add HDR backgrounds. And similar to Cinema 4D and 4D Lite, I have tons of videos on this, so I'll link to those. So if you want to learn more about Video Copilot's Element 3D, check out those videos or just check out Video Copilot's site too. Andrew Gramer has some great videos for that. So in this option, if you're using this plugin for medium level animation, so you have an object, you have some objects, you have something like a phone or a tablet where you need to use a screen or just one 3D object that's rotating or a system of 3D objects. And you know After Effects, you don't have Cinema 4D, you wanna stick with what you know. This is a great option in my opinion. I use it a lot, like I said, and the benefit is it's up to speed with how you're used to working in After Effects. So you can set up a lot of options in the plugin for lighting, rendering, shadows. You can also add your familiar options with lights in After Effects, which we have here and it will actually render those. It will use the shadows and After Effects and use some good technology to add those. Here's a camera and I have all my options here. So in my opinion, again, as of now, After Effects is trying to catch up with their internal technology to something like this, where this is for video artists who are not quite at the full 3D level where you're into Cinema 4D, Maya, 3DS Max, Blender, something like that. In the built-in After Effects one, you can get an object in, great. If you're looking for more what you're used to with all the settings in After Effects, it's all there. So you can turn on depth of field, you can turn up the aperture, you can adjust the focus distance, you can do all that sort of stuff. It doesn't cut off options for what you're used to with 3D lights, cameras, and all of that. So those are all really good options. They have different places and I would use all of them collaboratively depending on the challenge of a project to be honest it's good to know what is in everything and the best tool to use and that's kind of my thing with all of this technology that's always changing in 3d and in this year with ai and video 
you got to know what your options are and pick the best tool. So those are my 3D options for After Effects 2025. I'm glad to be back with some more tutorials. I'll try to keep up a lot more this year and put a lot new content up. Thanks for watching and subscribing and be sure to follow me on YouTube and subscribe and comment of what you think of the video as well as other social media where we're at motiontutorials.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.